Play. Well, ladies, you have heard the ladies talk, and I think their positive attitude is highly commendable. To quote Juan Anisi, girl guiding is a lifetime commitment. I think I agree with that, right? And uh, these ladies, they have managed to balance between career, family, and girl guiding. Well done, ladies. Keep up the good work. So far, it has been fascinating. Remember, our present leaders play a very important role. They are the bridges between the past and the future. And now, I can't wait to hear what the future generation has to say. Introducing our future leaders, who will be sharing their aspirations, will be Miss Sherin Lee Yong Yong, who happens to be the National Membership Commissioner. Yong Yong, your turn to helm the session. Yong Yong, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Madam MC. A very good morning still. <laughs> and Salam Pandu Putri. Welcome to the future. Legacy narratives have the power to shape and even shift the future. While girls around the world are driving change, girl guides here are not excluded. In fact, have been numerously recognized for spearheading change. For this generation of women, influence often begins with their voice. And today, we are all so fortunate to have these five beautiful and brilliant young women with us to share on their impact, legacy and aspirations. Therefore, let us now welcome our first panelist, Ruby Chow Heng Yi, who is currently a Clover Guide of Girl Guides Association Malaysia. At present, she's working as a researcher in the human resources group in one of the well-known companies in the country. This fearless lady is not only feisty, but also far-sighted as she and her team has helped and chaired, develop, sorry, has helped chaired and develop the National Clover Guides Program, making this the program for Clovers by Clovers. Ruby, who was a Queen's Guide in 2013, also co-founded the Clover Guides Unit in one of the local universities. She was also a past participant and alumni of Juliet Lowe Seminar Taiwan Hub and also resides in the Organizing Committee of Girl Guides Stay at Home Challenge. Her present contribution is distinctly, distinctly attributed to being part of the editorial team for WAX 2021 World Thinking Day Activity Pack. So let us now join together to welcome this amazing lady, Ruby Chow Heng Yi. So Ruby. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Sherina, for that wonderful uh, introduction. So a very good morning, soon to be afternoon, to all of my sister guys over here in a Zoom platform. All right. So uh, I have two questions. So the first question given okay. to me was, what part of the legacy would you be proud to carry out? Now, uh, as mentioned by Ms. Sherin earlier, I was the chair of the National Clovers Program uh, Committee. Okay, so basically, just to share a little bit to all of you, this National Clovers Development Committee was actually uh, consists of about about ten to twenty of us from the age range of eighteen to twenty seven. So, like what Ms. Sherin mentioned earlier, it was from Clovers to Clovers. Okay, so when we were developing this program, we were thinking, what does this age group, this youth people, want? you know, when after they completed their Form 5. So we managed to come up with three pillars, which is a profession, personal and professional development, uh, outdoor and adventure, as well as active citizenship and community. Now, uh, the best part about this program that I was, I'm very proud of is because that this program is very flexible. Okay, you can conduct it, you can conduct it in your, your school, your institution after your Form 5, in your workplace or in your community after you say you completed your Form 5, you want to go back to your state and you'll be like, oh, I want to hang out with my friends, so what can we continue to do? So this is a very flexible program for everyone and you get to decide what you want to do. It's something that is very, very uh, interesting and it's something that is totally unstructured. You can do uh, whatever you want, just pick a program, pick an, uh, an activity, then you go ahead. So most important is we continue to find ways to grow uh, with girl guiding. And an interesting fact that I found out is that, you know, in girl guiding, whatever that you do, everything actually interconnects with one another. So basically, as mentioned earlier, so 
I was uh, from the Juliet Lowe seminar. Okay, I was one of the alumni in Taiwan Hub back in 2019. So when I was in Taiwan, I actually met a lot of young uh, girls from different different country, and I met this one girl from Canada. So I asked her, "What do you do?" Uh, you know, in your country, and they told me, "Oh, in my country in Canada, we have a program that is for youth." So after the Julie Lowe seminar, I actually called her, hey, can you come over? You come and tell my committee what you do. So we share our knowledge, we exchange ideas. So it's really amazing to see that, you know, when we in girl guiding, it's not only in Malaysia, but also in worldwide. So a little bit more was that, as mentioned by me, Shireen also, I, was, I founded the Girl Guides of UPM. And we started with only two packs. We grew to six, it grew to 30, and it continued to grow up until today. So I'm really, really happy to see that currently the uni my university has a girl guide and we continue to grow and we continue to uh, inspire more girls out there. And I just want to say that to all of you out there, especially to those who after you from five, you go to your university, etc. please continue this girl guide journey of yours. Go and make, go and just build a group, a small group of uh, girl guides in your university because trust me, you just shout one time, right? Then everybody will be like, oh, girl guides, they'll come and join. So it's like a magnet, you see? Definitely got people want to join and I believe that with your presence over there, you continue to grow this guiding movement and to share with everyone. So this that's all from uh, me for the first question and Miss Shireen, shall I proceed to the next or how? Okay, I'll just elaborate and ask you the next question. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Ruby, those are truly some stellar information and encouragement from Ruby. And thank you so much for providing us and developing us a breakthrough program. You know, for everyone present here and watching us live as well, guiding today is not only limited to schools, but also higher learning institutions and at workplaces as well. And with the flexibility of the Clover Guiding Program and with a minimum of eight girls from age 18 till 30 years old, now anyone can start a guiding unit by contacting the Girl Guides Association Malaysia nearest branch. Okay, so next question. Ruby, how would you aspire the guiding generation to be? Thank you for the question. Future Girl Guiding Generation, what I really, really hope to see is more young people taking up leadership positions, whether or not it's in your university, your school, your institution, or national or international level, go ahead and explore. To me, I really hope to see more young people taking up this position. Even when I was the 2021 World Thinking Day editorial team under WAX, I can see that a lot of people, a lot of those uh, girls from other countries, especially those Western countries, they actually have a lot of young people joining. So what I really hope to see is that for Malaysia, for Asia, more people will go out. Even as simple as going back to your own state or contributing in a national level, you can contribute in many, many different ways. I understand that at this point of time, after you, you know, especially when you step out of your university, you're going to work, then you will be very, very busy. But there will always be time and okay to go out and explore what is out there. And when you, once you have been more stable, you come back to girl guiding and that's where you'll be able to contribute so much more. That's what I see. And another one that I would like to see the future girl guiding as generation to be is hopefully this is what I hope to see is girl guiding. Now we always talk about uh, sustainability. We always talk about, you know, environment, climate change and so on. But what I really hope to see is that girl guides in the future will also be more involved in politics. When I talk about politics, it is not about political party, definitely not, okay? But it's more about decision making, like how previously we have actually engaged YB Hana, you know, to talk about a child marriage. That's also a part of engaging in the decision making and also engaging into the politics or the current situation that is happening in our country. So this can literally, it literally translates to uh, your being leaders of our community. And what's more interesting is that it's actually an amazing first step. So meaning that hopefully even for a primary or secondary, we can start to learn about how the government works, how does the local council, what can we do to contribute in our local community and not just in terms of the uh, sustainability and so on, but in decision making and so much more. So from there, it translates to continue to build our future leaders of tomorrow. So show that, you know, as a girl, you can do so much more. So I think that's all uh, for me. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Ruby. And may many more here actually pick up Ruby's aspirations. And Ruby, you're definitely right. 
The power of voice and confidence can make huge differences and lasting changes. And I believe that is totally possible. All of us here have our own sphere of influence. So thank you so much, Ruby, for sharing. Our second panelist is an agile, young and creative Clover Guide who is currently a higher learning student doing her internship at one of the press companies. Putri Nur Inara started Girl Guiding since 13 years old and in 2016, she was awarded the Queen's Guide Award. She has been a big part of the Girl Guides National Dance Team where she represented Malaysia in many international dance festivals. Besides that, she enjoys volunteering to facilitate workshops for the younger girls and she was also part of the committee in the existing National Clover Guides program. Wishing I have moves like Jagger just like hers, let us join together and welcome this stunning young lady, Putri Noor Inara. Wow. Hey, everybody. Okay, so Putri, what part of Legacy would you certainly be proud to carry out? Well, first of all, thank you to Ms. Shireen for that very interesting introduction and thank you for this opportunity. It's an honor to speak alongside uh, all of these powerful leaders and be here with all my guiding sisters as well. So which part of the legacy would I like to carry out? For me, girl guiding was so important in shaping my identity, mostly because of culture and arts as well. Not a lot of people see this aspect of girl guiding, but in school, culture and arts is not a part of our syllabus. Not really, it's not emphasized. So girl guiding gave me that platform to be more connected to my cultural roots. Because if you look at Malaysia, we are a country that is so diverse with so many cultures and ethnicities. And girl guiding gave me a platform to hone my skills. I was actually a part of the National Girl Guides team for dance along with my friends. And through that, we managed to represent Malaysia and participate in a lot of overseas cultural festivals. And it was a really great experience because we got the chance to share and show our cultures, you know. Not only that, guiding also had a lot of workshops which helped to tap into a lot of um, the art parts of me. So I participated in a lot of poetry workshops. We even had the chance to play gamelan. Like who even plays gamelan nowadays? It's something that is so rare, but I actually had the chance to touch a gamelan set and play it. So yeah. And honestly, no matter what you do, what skill you want to hone, there's always a place like that in guiding. And I want to relate that back to the Clover program that Ruby spoke about just now. And we developed it in a way that it targets different aspects. So there's adventure, personal development, and active citizenship. So we, with these three aspects, you can um, grow in any talent or skill that you want to have, you know, be it dance, be it singing, poetry or even if you're an Instagram influencer like you have a space in guiding and we want to make sure that everyone feels included and everyone is a part of this guiding journey together so yeah definitely I would like to carry out that part of the legacy the cultural and arts section Okay, so thank you, Putri. And for those who love cultural and art, you know, may you take Putri as your example. And not just that, Putri is also a young leader in one of the open company units. And for everyone's information, open company units are also now available at Girl Guide branches for girls who want to experience and be part of guiding but could not do so at schools. We also have Trifor Guild units for women aged 31 years and above who are not guiding leaders in school but wish to be part of the Girl Guides Association Malaysia as well. So right, next Putri, how would you aspire the future guiding generation to be? Uh -huh. What an interesting question. So um, in 10 years, I definitely want to see guiding have more influence in the way our country is run. Uh, like Ruby said, we do have the chance to change politics because we even managed to bring the whole and child marriage issue to parliament. 
And that's something that's so powerful because not a lot of organizations and not a lot of people have the chance to do that. So yeah, I definitely want to see Guiding have more influence and hopefully be so powerful that we can bring a change to our country's policies. And through this, we can actually bring more awareness, not only to um, our country's own issues, but our global issues as well. Because when we talk about our country, um, our issues that are happening in our country, we can also elevate um, awareness on issues that are going around in Southeast Asia and then eventually the world, you know. Uh, Girl Guides is a world movement and I don't think people really see how big of an organization that we are because we really span across so many countries and so many regions. And especially in these pressing times that we are living in, I think it's really important for girls to be involved in all ages because we inspire each other. Young girls inspire the young leaders and the young leaders um, get inspiration from our older leaders. In turn, it's just a circle and we all inspire each other, you know. And I definitely want to see more people participating as well in um, the open company, like Ms. Shireen said. It's a... Uh, a part of Girl Guides that allows people who don't have this platform in schools and universities, like my university doesn't have Girl Guides, which is why I'm an open company. And people who don't have Girl Guides in their high schools or their primary schools, they can join open company as well. So it'll be really nice to see open company be more widespread with people from different states and stuff like that. So yeah, I think in all, if we work hard enough, we can really bring a change and really show people what power we hold as girls. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Putri, for all your wonderful insights and aspirations. And Putri is so right. To all girl guides, girls, young ladies, women who are here and also watching this segment, you know, the world is in your hands. The time is now. Over the centuries and decades, the role of girls has transformed. We often hear that girls must be everything in the past, but today, girls, you can be everything and anything who run the world. Right, so for next, there is a saying that goes, if you can't figure out your purpose, figure out your passion, for your passion will lead you right into your purpose. Our third panelist is a trainee teacher who has chosen teaching as her lifetime devotion. Having to have also helped develop the National Clover Guides program, Altia, Natasha, Anna, Edwin also facilitated the National Wax Leadership Mindsets online program in 2020. She was also a participant of Juliet Law seminar, Maldives Hub. Recounting her experiences, Altia honestly admitted that she was not really active in girl guiding during her school days, but rejoined again during her teaching program as part of the course requirement. However, she specified this particular life-changing event when she changed her perspectives towards girl guiding, having to attend the WAX advocacy training held in the Greece Milan in 2018. Her passion was now found, and now she can't stop. Let us now join together to welcome this energetic young lady, Altia Natasha Anna Edwin. Hi, good morning everyone. Hi. It's afternoon already, Altia. Oh, sorry. Good <laughs> afternoon, everyone. Lose okay. track of time. So, Altia, if I may ask, what part of the legacy would you be proud to carry out? The legacy that I am proud to carry out would be guiding as a platform of influencing. As we all know, Girl Guiding in Malaysia is a school-based and community-based association. Hence, we have a great number of girls actively involved in guiding. As a result, the GGAM is able to influence most young girls and women in Malaysia. GGAM definitely had influence and made an impressive positive impact in improving the quality of life of young girls and women. Guiding definitely had shaped young girls and women to become more confident and brave in advocating for what is right. In conjunction with Putri's aspiration for GGAM, in 2018, GGAM have welcomed a pledge by senior government ministers in the country to tighten the law around child marriage. Around 40 girls and leaders from GGAM were joined by representatives of various NGOs 
outside the parliament building in the capital Kuala Lumpur. The petition contained more than 156,000 signatures and was handed to the Deputy Minister of Women, Family and Community Development, Hannah Yeo. This is the type of influence and impact that guiding holds among young girls and women. And this is the type of the legacy that I would be proud to carry on for so many more years. Thank you, Ms. Shireen. Okay, wow, those wise words of a girl with purpose and passion. You know, like Altia, perhaps many might relate for not having found a purpose in guiding yet, but it's what, perhaps because it's what you are made to join in schools, but you know, for, for these of those, you know, my advice would be just keep guiding for you will know, you know, your, pa your passion may just be in the next activity or event or even from a sister friend. So thank you, Altia, for sharing. Next, Altia, how would you aspire the future guiding generation to be? Well, for the future generation, guiding generation, I hope that the future guiding generation will be actively aware of the importance of women's role in society. As we all know, gender inequality is a constant battle. It is important that young girls and women to realize it is our fair share of duty to take charge in overcoming gender inequality. To do so, young girls and women must always be in the know with the current affairs of the world. Be interested, be knowledgeable, be loud, take actions. Show the world that women too have a voice and can be influential. Right now, we are lucky to have remarkable young girls and women that inspire us to find our voices. For example, we have Malala Yousafzai, a Pakistani activist in female education. We have Greta Thunberg, an environmental activist. We have Jacinda Ather, the New Zealand's remarkable female prime minister. These women showed us great leadership in tackling the world's current affair. They are the living proof that women too can make a difference. Hence, we need more women in decision making. I believe where the guiding path is currently at, the future gen guiding generation will embody the mindsets of what a leader should be and have significance. As a Juliet Law Seminar 2019 alumni, I have been exposed to the WAGS leadership model. In the model, there are six mindsets that anyone can practice in their daily life. The mindsets are effective mindsets, collaborative mindsets, worldly mindsets, creative and critical thinking mindsets, gender equality mindset, and responsible action mindsets. Personally, after attending JLS 2019 in the Maldives Hub, I find myself able to make decisions for the betterment of myself and also the people around me. For instance, when I was appointed as the head of facilitator, when facilitating the Leadership Mindset Online in 2020, there are many decisions I have to make, especially when it comes to the benefits of participants during the pandemic. This is where the mindset in the WAX leadership model came in handy. In guiding, I encourage young girls and women to maximize their potential, or even better, reach beyond their potential through what guiding has to offer, especially when it comes to leadership. There are so many opportunities that can participate, such as Juliet Law Seminar, Helen Soros Seminar, and so many more. Seize the opportunity and make a difference in your life. Thank you so much, Altia. Wow, those are pretty insightful and exemplary. So thank you again for your sharing and aspirations. Me, myself, to be honest, I was a product of uh, Dato Hendon uh, Leadership Seminar. And you know, Girl Guiding is absolutely an amazing platform to grow and hone your leadership skills. And I can confidently, boldly, 100% assure you that there is no better place than Girl Guys Association Malaysia to actively, as what Altia said, actively do and be that. So to all teachers and even community leaders, workplace leaders, former Girl Guides, come back and continue. Or even if you're new, join Girl Guiding for what you're going to experience from now on is entirely an experience of change for the better. Right, now, our second last panelist, Sharada Segaran, is a medical student and also a clover guide of Girl Guides Association Malaysia. 
She has been a girl guide for 11 years, from being a brownie attending camps to now a young leader organizing events. Having to receive a Queen's Guide Award in 2016, Sharada was a two-time GGA and public speaking champion, Okay, where she was also featured on WAX for reporting on victim blaming during 16 days of activism and also represented GGAM to interview our former Minister of Women, Family and Community Development, YB Henayu, in Lead the Girl Force Unscripted and Unstoppable Forum. She was also part of the team to develop, review and host the launch of the Stay at Home Challenge Pack. And despite her busy studying schedule, this young lady never fails to lend a helping hand to GGAM. So without further ado, let us welcome this bright and beautiful lady, Sharada Segarin. Thank you so much, Miss Shireen, for a very kind introduction. <laughs> You're welcome. So Sharada, <laughs> what part of the legacy would you be proud to carry out? Guiding is a journey, not a destination. We are inheriting this future that our leaders have built and are building right now. But we, as the future generation, play the key role to ensure that we continue to improve, evolve, and bring Girl Guides Association Malaysia to greater heights. I personally would be focusing on advocacy. While Ms. Shirin very kindly highlighted my humble achievements in guiding, let me share with you the work that goes on behind the scenes. One of my very first major guiding experience was nervously standing on a huge stage in Wisma Pandukutri, delivering my first ever public speaking speech in front of hundreds of people much more older than me at the age of 10. I remember holding on tightly to a crumpled piece of paper, looking at my mother's encouraging smile, the faces of all the guiders in the hall, and thinking, oh my God, what is it that I can say that they don't already know? At that time, I was clueless, but now I have the answer. Your story, your perspective, your ideas is what makes you unique. And yes, you will be heard no matter where you go with your own voice. Moving forward, while our girls continue to share and shine in Girl Guides Association Malaysia, we need to give them the confidence that it doesn't stop here. They have so much to offer in the outside world. Like my fellow panelists have mentioned before, we have already started influencing decision makers in our effort to end child marriage. We have got a long way to go, but we have started. I've been incredibly fortunate, fortunate to be the voice of Girl Guides Association Malaysia in forums with ministers, alongside having very supportive parents who have gone above and beyond for me. The best sisters were always there and definitely not forgetting the fantastic guiders who have personally mentored me. Teacher Jessie, Pon Sophia, Pon Rohaya, Cik Gujum, Miss Kaling, Miss Tammy and Dato Jaya. The list goes on and on and we'll be spending the whole day here if I have to mention everyone's name. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for believing in me and molding me into who I am today. I aspire to build the same resilience among our girls so that they firmly hold on to their principles and have their heads held high no matter what the challenge may be in advocacy. The time the world tells young girls I expected to sit down and listen is no more. There is so much scope in unpacking the professional and the experience the young generation has to offer. It's about telling girls and young women that you have the right, as much as anyone in the room, to think about what you want for the future and to create a future. I'm sorry, I think I got disconnected. Yeah, all of us. Came back in. Yeah, sorry. Okay, you can just continue, Sharada. Okay. Um, as I was saying, I want to give young girls the same confidence that was given to me as a young girl so that they know that the age does not matter. They don't underestimate themselves. And with the spotlight on you, they know that everyone is interested to actually listen to what you have to say. I'm currently 22 and I'm the youngest member in the National Coalition of Mental Wellbeing. But without a doubt, I would not be here 
if Girl Guides Association Malaysia did not believe in the 11-year-old brownie in an oversized uniform with big dreams. Okay, thank you Sharada for sharing all your real experiences and avid insights. Take Sharada's words, build your life stories here with GGAM. And yes, I definitely agree with Sharada on mental health and well-being and congratulations on being part of the committee. You Thank know, you. Ministry of Health's lifestyle campaign survey has actually noted that the rates of mental health amongst Malaysian youths today to be quite high at 49%. And I'm starting to think there is no better place than girl guides to be healthy and happy. So Sharada, for your next question, how would you aspire the guiding generation to be? I strongly believe we should push for an advocate panel represented by girls and young women in Malaysia. These girls should be given the right training and grooming to be able to stand up and speak on issues close to their hearts. Our girls are more than capable to engage with national stakeholders, policymakers, board of directors and NGOs. We have an amazing platform, a wide array of resources and dedicated trainers, great mentors who go above and beyond for our girls. What we need to contribute right now and to continue to work on is to engage with more external bodies to provide more opportunities for our girls to go through these channels. I, together with many of my sisters in guiding, would like to be part of the journey in helping thousands of girls to find their voice, to develop self-poise, confidence, and in concise words, the abilities to stand up and speak up. We seek to build the capacity of young women and girls in Malaysia through leadership development and mentoring so that they can live empowered lives, become model and change agents in their communities. To all young girls, your voices, your experience count and we are the barometer of the future. So why not speak up and use our voice? Together, let us continue to build a safe, accountable and inclusive platform with and for our girls. Whether we're proud of what we have done or regretted it, our story is all that will remain when we leave one day. The future I aspire for our girls and the legacy I aim for and that we should all strive for is to make the story the best that we can be. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharada. That was really a beautiful vision and aspiration. You know, echoing Sharada, for everyone here today, you don't have to be great to start, you know. You just have to start to be one. So join Girl Guiding today. And if you are already one, invite a friend today and start small. Okay, so right next, our final panelist is beautiful, humble, and wise beyond her years. As the committee member of the Constitution Commission and Queen's Guide Leadership Fund for Girl Guides Association Malaysia, Crystal Wong Wai Chin is also a lawyer by profession. She was awarded the Queen's Guide Award in 2007, and following that, in 2011, represented Malaysia at the Young Women World Forum in London, United Kingdom. She attributed her success today to Girl Guiding for having helped shape and nurture her to reach her fullest potentials. Despite her busy schedule, Crystal has never failed to support the Guiding family whenever her time and commitment permit. So let us now hear from our awe-inspiring young lady, Crystal Wong Wai Chin. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction and sharing. <laughs> so, Crystal, what part of the legacy would you be proud to carry out? Thank you. That's the hardest question and being the last speakers of today's forum, and in fact, in any forum or discussion, especially when we have imminent panels and aspiring young leaders from past, present, and future. I'm extremely proud of First, to be trained by Girl Guide Association of Malaysia in Sabah Sanakan by one my favorite, uh, one Shirley Wong, and also obviously Miss Judy Go, Judy Go. And finally, return to when we connect with Girl Guide Association of Malaysia in 2019. That was the time when I was made a partner of my firm. So often in workforce and professional work, we pride our professional services. In our case, most firms build their clients by the hours, 
So lawyers' bonuses can, depending on the firm, be based on the billable hours. And the Chief Justice of Singapore once said, time is money, and an increasing emphasis on the later means that young lawyers, or in fact young professionals, are often expected to sacrifice more time on the form of the formal, and the only real outer boundary, it seems, being that we only have 24 hours a day. But we have to realize this is only one of the many yard states. And to me, the spirit of voluntarism mentioned by a lot of our previous leaders, giving back to society is evidence, is more evidence than ever, especially among the young leaders that we've heard before me. Contrary to the self-centered stereotypes when it comes to choosing a career path, millennium graduates are often just as likely to look for a profession with purpose, which offers opportunities to make an impact in life than the one that brings in just high salary. So young people and our young girls understand the potential of and have the power to do good. And we know that when the compassion of youth is lead, it is young people that make a real difference, drive change, coming fully, work with passion, and their leadership shine. So to me, this is the legacy of GGAM, Girl Guide Association of Malaysia, developing full potential of our young girls, championing women empowerment, diversity and inclusion, as well as most importantly in my mind, improving social mobility. And I am a life example and a beneficiary of Girl Guide Association of Malaysia. And I hope to support Girl Guide Association of Malaysia as my time and commitment permit. Thank you so much, Crystal, for always keeping your best interest with Girl Guides. You know, and to all the working professionals out there, there's always a place for you in guiding to render your expertise and also, and also support to help shape the future. And since Girl Guides Association Malaysia has now opened our doors, extending girl guiding to communities, we invite ladies of all ages to come join us and make this change together. So next, Crystal, how would you aspire the guiding generation to be? With where I am today, I strongly believe in channeling guiding experience to the professional world. I think this is very important. As leaders, young leaders, you no doubt will agree with me that some of the experience of important transferable skills I'm talking about, you gain it through Girl Guide. And that is like curiosity, problem solving, leadership, self-confidence, teamwork, collaboration, mentorship, communication, how do you solve conflicts with so many of us? How do we discuss through everything? So some of us even learn specific area knowledges through various structured programs that Girl Guide, um, Girl Guide movements offer. Community service, some of us may even want to work for the UN. And these knowledge that we learn how to work with non-profit services, sectors are very important. Environment, we are into sustainability. We have projects and mentioning by our leaders earlier. These are applicable if you want to work with conservation um, or in scientific themes like rubies or work issues. We talk about work issues, we talk to them with our leaders, and these are the things that we learn through Girl Guide Movement. And we have to realize that these themes are applicable as well and very important in the professional world. So my wish for GGAMs are two goals. Firstly, I hope to help GGAM to further develop skills and practices to better prepare our girls for professional work. This could be through simple career workshop, structured mentorship programs, connecting experienced and successful professionals, whether they are part of or used to be part of girl guiding, with talented and ambitious girls to achieve their goals in professional development. Secondly, we need to continue to better enhance ourselves and put continued our good effort, as mentioned, I think, by Dr. Nick Pfizer, and to reach out to corporations and these stakeholders to assist them to make a business case in the field of CSR, corporate services, the corporate relations services. So corporate social services in Malaysia was formally instituted by several corporations in 1970s, and thereafter has been made a mandatory CSR reporting by the Bursa. So we need to work with them. With this, I hope that GGAM can work with these stakeholders in more communities or charities, um, projects, work with partnerships so that we can help more people that are disadvantaged 
to build a more inclusive society and to help to provide equal opportunities to all. I must, I know time is uh, pressing, but I must mimic Puan uh, Haja Fatima. And I would like to end with paraphrasing Amanda Goldman's oil where she presented at this, uh, during the President Biden's inauguration, but I'll paraphrase a little bit. We gather today to reminisce our past and be present boldly, fiercely, and freely. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inactions and initial will be the inheritance of, of our next generation. But one thing is clear, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, and then love becomes our legacy and change our girl's future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. And yes, Amanda Gordon was amazing. Gorman, sorry, was amazing. I remember something she mentioned that, you know, we have to brave to not just see the light, but also be the light. So thank you so much, Crystal, for your visions and aspirations. And I agree, there's no better place than Girl Guiding to help build and shape your soft skills and also transferable skills, which are deemed extremely important in the working world. And, well, you know what they say, two is better than one. So let us all embrace this togetherness in all the potential partnerships that we can build. All right, so now this marks the end of the sharing, but the beginning of the future. As we end the segment now, let us not forget that yesterday is the history we forged, today is the gift we have been blessed with, and tomorrow is a mystery for our young ones. Honor the past, engage the present, and definitely embrace the future. Thank you. Back to you, Madam MC. Thank you, Yong Yong. There was some real powerful sharing, Yong Yong. After listening to the agile, stunning, talented, energetic, and charismatic young leaders, it is a matter of fact that girl guiding has played an important part in molding them into what they are today. And I think that is a compliment to Girl Guides Association Malaysia. There is future in girl guiding and there is girl guiding in the future. Yes. There should be sustainability in girl guiding. To the girls, the brownies, the girl guides, the rangers and the clovers who are listening out there, let this become your motivation to achieve more in your guiding journey. Well, all of you have heard inspiring stories of girl guiding in Malaysia. Let's shift our attention and hear from our distinguished guests from abroad. From Korea, we welcome Yang Hormat, Datuk Dr. Juson Beyond. To say a few words, Datuk Dr. Juson is the founder member of Friends of Asia Pacific Wax, or commonly known as FAPW. Ladies, for your information, FAPW is a regional fundraising scheme under the patronage of Her Majesty Tabawa Duli Yamaha Mudia, Sri Paduka Baginda Raja Permaisuri Agong, Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria. FAPW aims to provide financial resources for the development of girls and young women in the Asia Pacific region. Datuk Dr. Juson has also served as the chair of Asia Pacific Regional Committee and the World Board. Ladies, please join me in welcoming Yang Hormat Datuk Dr. Juson Bion. Dato, Dr. Juson, can you please unmute your microphone? 